It's amazing what a little hope can do. Hope can provide a purpose, and having a purpose can change the course of one's life, or the course of a country. The story of the CCC is one of hope and purpose, and it starts with a brand new president taking over during some of the hardest days in American history. Franklin D. Roosevelt was sworn into office in March of 1933. The economic fabric of the United States was unraveling. Some 25% were unemployed. Millions were out of work. Hope was in short supply. In his inaugural address, he vowed to put people to work. FDR sought innovative solutions to alleviate the widespread unemployment and poverty that gripped the nation. One such visionary initiative, as part of the New Deal, was the Civilian Conservation Corps, the CCC, an ambitious program that not only provided employment, but also left an enduring mark on the nation's landscapes. A few weeks later, he signed into law the Emergency Conservation Work Act, creating the Civilian Conservation Corps. The CCC aimed to address two pressing issues simultaneously, rampant unemployment and the need for environmental conservation. FDR, inspired by his experiences as Assistant Secretary of the Navy during World War I and his admiration for the civilian military training camps of the era, dreamed of a civilian workforce dedicated to environmental restoration. The CCC was born from this vision, with the primary goal of employing young, unemployed men on public lands. It combined FDR's interest in conservation and universal service for youth. He'd run a similar program, albeit on a smaller scale, while he was governor of New York. The CCC's impact was nothing short of transformative. Between 1933 and 1942, the Corps employed over 2.5 million young men, aged 18 to 25, from all walks of life. Men enlisted for a minimum of six months. These CCC boys carried out a myriad of conservation projects. Most notably, they planted trees, some 3.5 billion trees. You see, because of so many years of unbridled logging, the U.S. forests had shrunk from 800 million acres to 100 million acres in 1933. Trees FDR knew from working on his family's estate were an economic resource. They could also help with soil erosion, one of the contributing factors to disasters like the Dust Bowl. But planting trees wasn't the only thing Roosevelt's tree army did. Over its nine-year lifespan, the millions of young men who participated in the CCC constructed nearly 3,500 fire lookout towers and thousands of roads and trail bridges. They fought forest fires, maintained and improved thousands of miles of roads, fire breaks, and hiking trails. They strung telephone lines, built and improved dams and agricultural drainage. They undertook erosion and soil control projects on 20 million acres of land, and they built campsites, corrals, and fences that continue to benefit the millions of visitors to our nation's public lands. Did you know that Great Smoky Mountains National Park was built almost entirely by CCC labor? So was Big Bend National Park in Texas. The CCC also helped to create 711 new state parks across the country. In addition, we can credit the CCC with launching America's ski industry. A CCC team in Vermont spent years cutting trails. Places like Stowe, Thunderbolt, Wildcat, and Cannon. CCC workers cut some trails out west too. Rope toes were installed in the late 1930s, and well, the rest is history. Americans had a new winter pastime. Compensation in the CCC was a critical aspect, providing not just employment, 
but also support for families struggling during the Great Depression. CCC enrollees earned a monthly wage of $30, of which $25 was sent directly back to their families. This financial assistance was a lifeline for many households, helping them alleviate the economic hardships that were faced all across the nation. In addition to the monetary support, CCC camps offered educational opportunities for the young men involved. They aimed to provide not just employment, but also a chance for personal development and growth. Enrollees were often provided with basic education, including literacy and vocational training. This education was instrumental in broadening the horizons of many enrollees who had faced limited opportunities prior to joining the CCC. In fact, some estimates suggest that 57,000 illiterate men learned to read and write in CCC camps. A day in the life of a CCC enrollee involved hard work, camaraderie, and skill building. Living in military-style camps, the men were given three square meals a day. Breakfast and dinner were served in the mess hall, with lunch either being packed to eat on site or in the mess hall. Common meals included eggs for breakfast, sandwiches for lunch, and meat and vegetables for dinner. Because of better nutrition and exercise, men commonly gained an average of 12 pounds within the first two months at camp. Many camps played sports, with baseball, basketball, and boxing among the favorites. Some played instruments, and occasionally the camps hosted dances and played music. The disciplined routine this honest, good work installed a sense of purpose and teamwork. It fostered a personal development alongside their environmental contributions. The CCC had a broad geographical reach, with camps established in almost every state. The states with the most camps included California, New York, and Pennsylvania. Remarkably, there were more than 2,600 camps at the height of the program, each accommodating around 200 men. As World War II loomed, the CCC faced declining enrollments and budget cuts. By 1942, the program had served its purpose and was disbanded. The impact of the CCC, though, was huge. For starters, it prepared millions of young men for war, Many entered the CCC undisciplined, untrained, and uneducated. But during their time in the CCC camps, these young men received training, physical conditioning, outdoor skills, construction expertise, education, and learning about the importance of teamwork. Many developed a new sense of pride for their country. All of these proved to be valuable assets as many of them joined the military or took up civilian roles supporting the war effort. It prepared them for all of the challenges of World War II and beyond. In addition, their work is threaded into the very fabric of our national landscape. When you visit a national park or a state park, it's very likely the CCC helped build those roads, plant those trees, or help establish the infrastructure. Their efforts in conservation helped to ensure that the United States would have beautiful parks and places for her citizens to enjoy forever. The Civilian Conservation Corps stands as a testament to the power of innovative solutions during times of crisis. It reflects the resiliency and determination of a nation facing unprecedented challenges. The CCC remains a shining example of how collected effort, inspired leadership, and a commitment to a greater good can offer hope, provide purpose, and shape the course of a country's history. Thanks for watching Memory Mountain. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next story looking back over the landscape of Americana. And if you really like what you see, we'd be honored if you'd click to join as a member of our channel where you'll get exclusive benefits, 
and an increased voice in the videos you will see.